When writing my uh, book, If God is Good, that deals with the problem of evil, if God is all-powerful and all-good, how can there be so much evil and suffering in the world? I, I interviewed many suffering people, including Scott and Janet Willis. In 1994, a large object fell out of a truck on a Milwaukee freeway. Some of you know this story. Some of you remember it. In, in front of the Willis's van, they crashed into it. Their gas tank exploded. They had six children in the van, and all six of those children were killed. I interviewed Scott and Janet 14 years later after this accident, and now just a year and a half or two years ago, and Janet said in this two-hour interview, today I have a far greater understanding of the goodness of God than I did before the accident. And at the end of our two-hour conversation, Scott Willis said, I wrote down word for word what both of them said, Scott said, I have a stronger view of God's sovereignty than ever before. A greater understanding of God's goodness, a stronger view of God's sovereignty with six children dead? How is that even possible? What faith, what worldview exists besides a biblical worldview that could even possibly make that as a claim, that you could even hope that anyone could ever come to that conclusion, doesn't minimize their pain. The pain is, is, is very real. The number of people in the book signing this morning that came through that told me stories about loved ones who have died, who have diseases, who are going through all kinds of suffering, things that have happened in families. A missionary couple came through and their little two-year-old daughter, Gloria, who is an insulin-dependent diabetic. I'm insulin-dependent diabetic too. Um, and uh, it's harder for her because she's got it a lot younger than I. She's a lot younger than I am. Well, she's 54 years younger than I am. And it's tough for her and her family but here she is, and then somebody else comes through, and they're talking about a child with leukemia. And, and I'm actually uh, wearing a wrist bracelet that someone gave me, a couple that we met today, the, uh, Ken and Karen D'Amato, and it says, uh, Michael D'Amato, number 23, in our hearts forever. Their 12-year-old who earlier this year died from a rare cancer. This is the world we live in. And, and, and think about Scott and Janet Willis. Think about six children's names on a wristband. It, it, it's staggering the pain that there is in this world. But the worse things are, the greater the redemptive story would have to be to make all things right. And that is exactly what we see in Scripture. What would we know of the grace of Jesus Christ? Ephesians 2, 7 says that in the ages to come, God will be revealing unto us the riches of his grace and his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. What would you know of the grace of God if sin and evil and suffering had not entered the world? What would you know of God's mercy? What would you know of his patience? What would you know of his compassion? There are attributes of God that are great and glorious that we could never have known, that we could never have celebrated, that we could never have glorified him for and praised him for, for all eternity, had there not been evil and suffering in this world. There's a lot of people, even some evangelical writers, particularly open theists and others who, who are painting a picture like, well, God didn't really know. If, if he would have known in advance that all this horrible stuff was gonna happen, he never, ever would have created the world in the first place. Certainly not a world like this. Well, just remind yourself, first of all, he didn't create a world like this. He created a perfect world. But he also created it with the capacity for going the direction that it's gone. But not once did he surrender his sovereignty. Not once did he give it over to say, okay, now human beings are in charge. Satan is in charge, demons are in charge, 
they are sovereign over your life. A drunk driver can ruin your life forever. Not once did he give over his sovereignty. Still he remains sovereign and still he promises that he will weave things together in such a way that there will be good in our life. We will become more Christ-like. We will conform more to the image of Jesus that God himself will be glorified for all eternity in greater ways and we will experience greater good than we ever could have experienced if all the bad stuff hadn't happened. 